Hello, my name is Fern G. Zadkar. My website is www.ferngzadkar.com. I would like to welcome you to my series, A Poetry Study Guide for Teachers and Parents. This is part two, Ekphrastic Poetry. I'm pleased to present part two of my series, a poetry study guide for teachers and parents. This video is designed to assist teachers and parents who are homeschooling their children. It's a poetry unit I've developed based on two of my tongue-in-cheek ekphrastic poems, Venus de Milo, A Farewell to Arms, and Golden Boy. Ekphrastic poetry is poetry based on works of art. I won't go into too much detail here since that definition is the subject of one of the questions in the unit. I hope that these materials will be of practical use to you. This ekphrastic poetry unit is composed of four parts. To easily calculate a final grade, I've designed the total number of marks to be 100. I've also outlined the mark allocations for each section for your reference. Part 1, written short answer, 20 marks. Answer using complete sentences. As many of you may already know, this is a photo of the Venus de Milo. Venus de Milo, a farewell to arms, with apologies to Ernest Hemingway. Goddess of love and beauty, saucy wench, flaunting her perky breasts, cloth drapery sliding down her thighs, exposing posterior cleavage, befitting a plumber. She tilts to her right, unable to maintain balance, still stumbling in a state of stupor, following an ambrosia bender, culminating in the loss of her cherished plinth, and both marble arms. She is now but a spectacle for Louvre tourists who gawk and point at the vestiges of her night of debauchery. Venus de Milo, A Farewell to Arms. One. What type of art form is the Venus de Milo? Two, who does this work represent? Three, who was the artist? In what country and in what era did he live? Four, what is the imperfection for which this work is renowned? Five, what is the significance of the quote by Ernest Hemingway directly following the title of the poem. 6. What type of figure of speech is a farewell to arms in the context that it is used? 7. Define the word plinth. 8. What is ambrosia? 9. To what is ambrosia being compared in this poem? State the reasons for your response. 10. Do you think that tourists who visit the Louvre actually experience the reaction detailed in Carr's poem? Why? Here is a photo of the Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Bronze Adonis gilt in gold, balanced atop the dome of the legislative building, cradling a sheaf of wheat and raising a torch like a relay runner poised to pass the baton. You are toned, buff, in the buff. Naughty naked boy, where is your common sense? Facing northward, flaunting your manhood and exposing your full glory? to raw Winnipeg winters? Golden Boy. One, who was Adonis? Describe him. Two, where is Winnipeg? 
3. Why does the golden boy carry a sheaf of wheat and a torch? 4. Find a simile in this poem and explain it. 5. Describe the Winnipeg winter climate and explain its relevance to this poem. 6. How does the alliteration in the first and final lines of the last stanza contribute to the poem's message? 7. The first stanza describes the golden boy as a bronze Adonis, whereas the final stanza calls him naughty naked boy. Why is there this shift in opinion? General 1. The poet Fern G. Said Carr is originally from Winnipeg. Do you think that a poet's place of birth influences his or her writing? Why? 2. Both of Carr's poems refer to an artistic medium other than a painting. What other art forms can be considered to fall within the domain of ekphrasis? For example, architecture. 3. What is your opinion of ekphrastic poetry? Do you feel that it sometimes appears forced or contrived as opposed to spontaneous? Why? Part 2, short essay, 15 marks. Choose one topic from the following list and write a three paragraph essay in response. A. Find three instances of humor in Venus de Milo, A Farewell to Arms. Explain. B. Compare Venus's behavior to that of modern day adolescents. C. What is another meaning for the word golden and how could this affect the analysis of the poem Golden Boy? D. Discuss another poem, whether ekphrastic or not, which is primarily weather dependent. Explain how the weather is an integral part of the poem. Part 3, Poem, 25 Marks. Write an ekphrastic poem which uses a literary quote or reference after the title, as in the Venus de Milo poem. The quote should tie into the meaning of the title of your poem. The poem length should be at least 20 lines, not including title, line, and stanza breaks. Part 4, Project, 40 marks. Choose one project from the following list and be prepared to present it. A. Prepare a PowerPoint presentation analyzing either Venus de Milo, A Farewell to Arms, or Golden Boy. Prepare at least 20 slides. B. Create a physical model which is representative of the poem you wrote in Part 3 of this study guide. Explain its relevance. C. Create a board game which refers to your poem as well as other ekphrastic poems. D. In a group of no more than three students, prepare a skit based on an ekphrastic poem of your choice. The skit should be at least five minutes in duration. The script must be memorized and handed in to your teacher in advance of the group's performance. If you prefer, you may do a one-person skit instead. Acknowledgements and Credits Venus de Milo, A Farewell to Arms, and Golden Boy Poems, Copyright, Fern G. Z. Carr. Venus to Milo, A Farewell to Arms, and Golden Boy were first published in Ekphrastia Gone Wild. This video is based on a study guide by Fern G. Z. Carr, an ekphrastic poetry study guide based on poems by Fern G. Z. Carr, first published by Ain't Got No Press. Claude Monet painting and both Venus de Milo photos, public domain, courtesy of Wikimedia Commons.
colored paint strokes photo courtesy of Marcus Spiska on Unsplash, Golden Boy photo by David Stanley, and Golden Boy statue by Charles Gardet photo. Both are licensed images courtesy of Wikimedia Commons.